one. Interesting. Um, with shadow vents, I don't know. The last shadow vent, the problem is one, two, Medi double seal. They say swapped the Bassidon. Hey everyone, I hope the new season is going well for you all. Of course, like everyone else, I gotta try some of these new buff Pokemon. And I want to start off with Shadow Alolan Sandslash. It has some really interesting matchups, especially when shields are up. Obviously, if your shields are down, you struggle a lot more. But the Shadow variant itself is very strong. E even able to flip a lot of matchups that the non-Shadow can't, such as Lantern and Sableye in a lot of shielding scenarios. I decided to pair it up with Regiseal because Regiseal is one of the few Seal types that typically can get a shield off of a Medicham if they counter swap you and I expect to see a lot of Medicham. Spoiler, there's a lot of Medicham. And then I decided to lead it with a Pelipper. I needed something that beats Fighting type Pokemon as well as Galarian Stumpfizz and the Mud Boys and a couple other things as well. Some stuff like Trevenant is also pretty solid for Pelipper so it was pretty much the perfect fit for me. And I will say, because everyone's running Medicham, a lot of teams became a little bit predictable, which typically worked in my favor. The team overall was the team I started running. And I'm going to show you some of my battles from the early ranks all the way up to the last rank I hit before I switch it up and start playing Summer Cup. Before we get into the battles, a big shout out and thank you to all my patrons who've been supporting my content creation. If you would also like to have early access to my strategies and lineups or see behind the scenes footage of my battles, feel free to sign up in the Patreon link down below. In this scenario, the biggest downside of Helper is that it just doesn't have the bulk of some of the other popular flyers like Noctowl and Altaria primarily. Um, but outside of that, uh, I liked its coverage. It's also great against fire types, which I forgot to mention. My backline is very weak to fire types too. Um, but yeah, so as expected, Medicham counter swap. Uh, the power punch and dynamic punch ones are kind of more annoying, but even power punch Medicham, you can get a shield off of them, uh, which is really nice. It's really the dynamic punch one that you can't, but I've only run into really one of those. All right, so my opponent actually swaps over here. And the thing is I end up shielding the shadow ball here. Two reasons. One, Shadow Ball actually does a good chunk of damage to Shadow Alone Sand Slash. And two, uh, against Medicham, because Medicham is kind of low on energy, I can still potentially force a shield from it. Uh, so I end up shielding this Shadow Ball. It's going to do a decent amount of damage, and I don't want to have to shield the Sky Attack. Uh, and again, throwing out CMP here is going to be really nice, allowing me to get as much energy as possible, uh, because we know there's Medicham coming back in. I need to solve the switch timers, uh, and then... Uh, unfortunately, we CMP here. Uh, double super, super effective power punch does a lot of damage, um, but not as much as you would think, uh, just because they uh, cleared the buffs from earlier. All right, so Wall Rain. Um, this is kind of a interesting matchup, but because I had so much energy, I'm in a good spot, and I'm just going to CMP them on the second Weather Ball, ensuring that I get maximum energy here, and then have uh, almost Weather Ball ready for the match when it comes back in. Uh, so yeah, uh, Pelper itself is very, very strong, but it does need some shields. And Alone Sand Slash needs shields as well. So you really have to decide how you want to use the shields. Rage Seal, I almost never shield. Uh, once in a while, I will. Maybe like in this matchup. Um, I just need to land at least one Focus Blast. Okay, so I do land one. Maybe I do go... Yeah, I do shield. Because if I shield here, they have to go for another Earthquake. I could grab a shield here. I should go for the Zapcan debuff. There's almost no way they don't shield this. Honestly, Zapcan might even KO them. But putting them low enough in attack is kind of nice. Uh, allows me to potentially just uh, lock on down. And I force them to throw all the energy, which is very nice. Had I not debuffed them, that would be a different scenario. Um, so yeah, we're kind of back where we started. We have a few more... Uh, a little bit more engine than they do, but that's about it. Uh, but Alone Sand Slash, especially in the back, has been kind of a solid core breaker, right? It's decent into Jelson, super effective Shadow Claws. Uh, you obviously have to watch for Shadow Ball, but um, I don't even think they build up the Shadow Ball there, so that helped me a lot. And then Alone Sand Slash, definitely going to be able to win CMP here. And the typing is really nice against the Altaria. Uh, unfortunately, the Drone was not enough to KO, but either way, uh, I should be able to get to this Ice Punch and... Yeah, this is, this is going to do a lot of damage, you're going to see real quick. <laughs> and almost one-shotting, and I'm going to come with Helper to finish it off. Um, Wall Ring lead. This is, again, kind of a weird one. I typically just swap out. Uh, but if they stay in, they can actually do quite a bit of damage. But again, every team, almost every team has a meta champ somewhere there. And a lot of them are running Power Punch. The Psychic Ice Punch ones are really nice because they don't threaten as much. And they can't ramp up their damage, so they can't throw a boost to Psychic at you later. 
But typically speaking, most matches have to throw all their energy anyway. This player is actually kind of clever, so they went for the Psychic instead of the Power Punch on the second one, which is definitely the right play, because now they don't have to spend a shield. So it's a really good call by them. Uh, but at the same time, I'm able to wing attack all the way down, so I still get a lot of value here. And then I am going to throw a Weather Ball Bait here, uh, and unfortunately it does not land. So because of that, I'm going to shield and maybe bait him again, I think. I'm just going to double down here, I think. I think that might be the play. Um, yeah, but it's still a kind of tough spot, so I try to catch an Icicle Spear, and it looks like we do, which is very nice. Definitely going to waste a lot of their energy, double super effective, or double resisted, I should say. And then now I get a drill run off. So if they shield this, I get their second shield, and I can overform here, especially to go straight earthquake. They might bait me with ice school spear to force me to throw earlier, and that's exactly what they do. Um, and then they actually catch the drill run on a Nidal Queen. Shout out Nidal Queen. Something else I got buffed recently, but against this team, especially against the Lone Sand Slash and Pelper lead, it's not going to do so great. Uh, so yeah, again, Alone Sands has really kind of core breaking a lot of teams, especially in the back end, which is really what you want, because you want to draw out their Medicham, like, like I said, you want to draw out their Medicham with that Registeel. You want to go, Jags? I think she's, she's tired of seeing the Medicham too, I get it. Um, it is definitely unfortunate if you don't get a debuff. If you have a high enough rank Registeel, you can still get around it. This one, actually, they actually run Dynamic Punch, so never mind. But if they go straight Power Punch... Um, even if you don't debuff them, if your Registeel is highly ranked, you can still get that second Zap Cannon off. If it's not as highly ranked, then it's a different story, but it just kind of varies. Alright, so my opponent here actually comes in Azumarill here. Maybe I try to catch a move? Okay, no, I don't end up catching it on that time. If you catch a move, it'd be really nice, especially if you catch an Ice Beam. Um, it's a little weird on the timing. If they know how to optimize, they're probably going to throw on every odd bubble. I think that's what I'm going for here. They still don't throw, actually. I'm going to let this go. If it's Hydro Pump, I lose anyway, right? They end up throwing Play Rough, which is really nice for me. Uh, because it's going to be resisted. And I'm much rather tank it on this than on my Pelipper. And I'm just going to do as much as I can here. Um, trying to optimize here. I think we CMP, which is really huge if I did. Um, you want to just let this alone Sand Slash go. Because double resisted Shadow Claws is just not doing you any favors. Um... Yeah, so let's see what we do here. I'm going to go straight for the Hurricane. And we do land the Hurricane, which is pretty nice. Um, oh, yeah, right, because they don't have shields. Yeah, uh, yeah. and then, anyway, uh, able to finish off the Zumo here, too. Saving the shield for a Dunsparce later was definitely important, because otherwise they could just take us out with Rock Side. Um, okay, Galarian Stumpfist. This is kind of um, a decent lead. Uh, you usually used to CMP on this until they buffed Wing Attack, and now you get to the second and uh fourth weather balls sooner um so you just outpace the glitter uh they did nerf weather ball uh probably over a year or two ago at this point um so you used to be able to win the zeros but you can't really win the zeros uh because they get the two rocks icy for you uh to ko them but either way my opponent is going to counter swap here uh what i should have done is maybe farmed up a little bit more um but either way we're in a good spot here because after you land one zap cannon you typically can lock on down and there's really no reason for them to shield that. Uh, so we get the lock on down-ish. Yeah, I'm going to just trust that this is sky attack, and it is, which is very nice. Um, and then here comes like Glenn Stumpfus. I don't think they have a ton of health left, but my whole team is not too bad into it. And they come in Altaria. We're going straight away for Pelper. I kind of assumed, I thought it was going to be something else, but this works out perfectly for me because uh, either way, we get a shield too. Even if we didn't get that shield, uh, it would have been over with this back end matchup. Um, but yeah, again, Lone Sand Slash really able to close out a lot of teams. If they have double counter users slash double fighters in the back, like it's usually just like you lose. But a lot of people are not running that. They're running a little more balance lines uh, with one Metacham usually in the back. Um, again, I was trying to make a catch here. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to on the first one. I was trying to figure out the timing. You know, that's the tricky thing with the Zoom Rose. Um, I tried to figure out the timing on this one. Um, and this time I do catch a move, which is kind of nice. Ends up being an Ice Beam, resisted, very, very nice. Uh, they do come in with Glare and Stumpfist. I'm down a shield. I'm just going to throw this Focus Blast and probably just, like, dip out here. Uh, they shield, though. Yeah, I kind of just have to let this go. Um, it's not really worth. They do get some Mud Shots through here, which is a little tricky. But we have a ton of energy from earlier, which is very nice for me. Because, again, uh, two Weather Balls should be enough to KO if they have any chip damage. And the Registeel and the Wing Attacks might be enough here actually that might i might still be a little short um well okay it doesn't matter either way we swap to the lone sand slash and all this is well this is neutral or quite super effective but taking the neutral rock side is not a big deal all right i think we cmp here which is really nice for me and then 
yeah, most of these moves are resisted here. Um, and we're just going to throw the Ice Punch here to finish him off. Oh, wait, no, they still have the Altaria. Sorry, I didn't even see the third Pokemon. Yeah, so we just need to do as much as we can. Again, a Lone Sand Slash, a huge core bigger in back. I didn't even see the Altaria from earlier. I was like, why am I throwing an Ice Punch and, like, over farming here? But makes sense. Makes sense. All right. Lantern. <clears throat> this Lantern is actually running Water Gun, but even Water Gun is pretty bad for the Helper. Honestly, Lantern anywhere against my team is really annoying um if i come in even energy and even shields uh in the ones and twos my lone sand slash beats it um but that's about it everything else uh registeel beats it in zeros <coughs> beats it in zeros but loses the one and twos so kind of the reverse alone sand slash and pelper has no play so either way it has a lot of play into my whole team uh which is not a great time but uh that being said i am going to come in pelper and i'm just going to no shield whatever comes at me I, this thing doesn't have too much play i need to save my shields for this alone stand slash again i have energy but it's not really worth preserving the pelper i get one shadow call worth energy for the trade off of one shadow call and damage uh, i think it's kind of worth it for the most part i'm gonna bait here um yeah because i figured they're probably gonna shield right um and then i figured they had something in the back that was kind of weak to alone sand slash otherwise they wouldn't come in lantern right away if they had a fighter they would have came in right uh, so again, we could really optimize off of this, and we're going to win charge of priority against the Lantern anyway. So as long as uh, I have energy left, I should be in good spots. Um, and then they come in Lantern, but uh, we still have a shield, so that's going to be quite nice. Yeah, good thing we have the shield. Shadow Call this down. Uh, so knocked out, knocked out. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Um, yeah, Lantern again, still very tough. Um, I think I still lose typically most of my Lantern games, but I just want to show. How there might be some win cons once in a while. All right, I probably stayed in this match way too long, but at that point, because I did, I'm just gonna over farm and then swap to my Registeel so that the half something for the Swamper. Um, the good news is Swamper typically cannot much shot Registeel down. Um, I'm gonna just over farm as much as possible actually here though. Um, yeah, even at this range though, I'm not too worried because again, uh, they can't really much on me down, so they still have to throw their energy. Um, so I am going to throw a Focus Blast here. I'm a little worried that they get a lot of energy. I might just swap over. Yeah, I just go for the combo play. Um, Alone Sand Slash is not too bad into Swamper, especially because they are chipped this low at this point. Uh, we're going to just shield. We have a lot of energy. I just didn't want them to farm me down because I was pretty much a Hydro Kinja at this point in time. Typically speaking, Pelper Full Health, no big deal. Um, but in this situation, it's a different story. All right, Glaren Stumpfisk. Again, um, we have a decent amount of play here. I think that they charge from priority me here. They might have. That's huge if they did. No, they didn't. Okay. Um, at this point, I just bring my Registeel. I was trying to catch a move, but either way, uh, I forced them to throw Earthquake, actually, which is pretty massive. Um, I think Roxanne might have been enough, or they can much on me down. But, uh, yeah. Alone Sand Slash, I even needed for that game. Uh, Pelper really doing a lot of work, especially against both ground types there. All right. Sabwa is also kind of a weird one. It has played into everything. Uh, I beat it in the zeros and the twos with a long shadow, long sand slash on even energy, but this thing's in the lead, which is not great. Um, but again, I need to save shields for my more frail Pokemon. I typically don't shield Red Seal unless it's like an earthquake from Glaring Sunfist, and I see a lot of value in shielding it. Uh, but we're just going to let this go down. Um, that was kind of bad on my end. I think I had the Zap Cannon, and I should have just thrown it. Uh, instead, they forced a second shield from me before I could throw it um and we okay so i guess my place i'm gonna go for switch advantage uh it still might pay off because i should spend a shield earlier right i get a zap cannon off and it's getting a knock towel so that's gonna be very nice um no debuff though which is unfortunate and they get some energy so that's also not great all right we're gonna throw these ice punches though um start doing some work does a lot of damage still uh, the question is, do I swap out here? I don't know. It's a weird situation. And then they come in with Lantern. Not a great time. As I said, Lantern is a huge problem for this team. Um, even the back end against Olin Sand Slash when shields are down. And as you can see, shields are down. And this one's also a spark. So it's not great. Um, but yeah, Weather Ball wouldn't even be enough at that range. So I didn't even throw it. Uh, but yeah, Lantern with Shield Sound, something, Lantern placed in a lot of spot, spaces definitely going to be a little bit harder for this team. Just want to be transparent about that aspect. It's winnable, but just something to watch out for. All right, Pelper leads. They almost always throw Hurricane right when they have it, uh, just because they also might be weak to Pelper in the back. So some, some of them are just going to go for CMP, try to figure out who wins CMP and stuff. And I always go for the catch on Registeel and I always catch it. So definitely a good strategy in that Pelper mirror matchup. 
Um, especially if their back line is much stronger than the seals. Like I've seen Pelper with fighters in the back, and you definitely want to draw that out. You don't want to spend your Pelper against the opposing Pelper. All right. They're throwing weather balls, and they're staying in here. This is a weird situation, because typically speaking, Pelper is going to lose against Seal, So they end up, s yeah, double shielding for whatever reason. I have the energy stored, though. They're down both shields, so we're in an okay spot. And they actually come in with Shadow Wall Rain. Kind of interesting. So, again, with the chip damage, it's actually not too bad. Um, I am going to throw the Hurricane. I didn't really want to go for CMP, because I think I would have capped on energy anyway. Um... And now they come with Jellicent. Very nice, because we now get the Hurricane through. Obviously, Shadow Ball is still going to threaten my alone Sand Slash. Um, we unfortunately don't get to move there. Yeah, but we still come in alone Sand Slash. Uh, they need... They need Surf here. They need a Shadow Ball after this. And I go for the potential lock on down or catch. And they throw a Shadow Ball here. Really odd. I'm surprised they didn't throw a Surf there. Maybe they just conceded. Or maybe I did catch. It was like a delayed like press of the button. I don't know. Maybe they're like already trying to press it. But either way uh definitely going to be a good spot for us um alone sand slash is also kind of a weird one um pelper does resist the damage against this so you typically want to get out of there but at the same time you don't really want to match up your own alone sand slash into this uh, i always never i never safe swap my own own alone sand slash i'll counter swap it sometimes but it makes no sense to uh, safe swap it uh because of these kind of situations and a lot of them a lot of you have fighters in the back so they come out with a lot of energy which is not great for me and they actually come in with sable here too <clears throat> um, so I think the best play here is I take out the Sabwai, save my shield for the Alone Sand Slash coming back in, um, because I think they probably have a hard Pelper check if I were to guess. Uh, so I'm, that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to throw the energy here. What did they come in with here? Um, it is... Oh, it's a Metacham. Yeah, so that's actually a pretty solid read from my opponent. They expected me to bait out their fighter with my Registeel. So they actually purposely kept the Magicham in the back, which is a really smart play by them. Because uh, they still were able to maintain Switch Vanner, so they were in a good spot. They could still align the Magicham into my Fighter, uh, into my Alone Sand Slash. Uh, but we did have a lot of energy here, which is quite nice. And then I throw, and I think this is on charge and priority, which is pretty big if it is. Yeah, yeah, I think I was... I think that was the plan on my end, or that's a coincidence, I don't know. But we need a shot call down, and we simultaneously knock out. So still a really close one, though. Um, and I will say that uh, I think I did everything I could, but really great place for my opponent just to even not take the bait from the Reg Seal. Um, as many uh, Medchamps as there are, there probably are almost at least half of those are probably also safe swap Reg Seal. So a lot of these Medchamp users in the back definitely know how to play around it. All right. The Axe Defense, they actually went for Psycho Boost first, which I think is a good play. It does a lot of damage even if it goes unshielded, but they expect most people to shield that instant Thunderbolt. So, of course, that's what they're going to do. Uh, it's going to bait me and swap out, which is a good play. Um, this is kind of a tough spot. I think if I was on even shields, this would be easy for me to uh, lock it down or like win out this matchup. But because they're up a shield, it gets a little dice here. I don't really feel like spending all my shields at this point. I don't have a clear... Uh, oh, actually, it didn't KO. That's a huge. Um, I don't have a clear... Oh, okay. Well, the shield anyway. Um, I don't have a clear answer to Deoxys Fence. So I can't really go down shields. So I should come in with a lone Sand Slash. I don't know. Maybe it's not the best play. Maybe I should have came in Pelper because Pelper already is going to get one shot from Thunderbolt. And Psycho is going to do a lot of damage. At least I'm not doing Resisted. But again, we're going to have to see what they have in the back here. It could be a Zoomerill. Kind of an old school line. Deoxys Defense. Umbreon Azumarill. No, <laughs> it is none other than Spark Lantern. So Spark Lantern is not going to be great, as we talked about. And Shield Sound, we're in a war spot, uh, even especially against... Oh, I have I have one shield, but it's just... I, I can't really shield this, right? Um, Yeah, I could shield this, try to Shadow Call down, but they still have a Deoxys Defense, right? So that's not going to be a great time. We do get the Shadow Call down, but it's just way too much on Deoxys Defense. Overall, the team was a lot of fun. I think the buff to Alone Sand Slash definitely made it really fun to use since a lot of matchups. Hopefully, those that like Alone Sand Slash can use the team and perform well with it because I do think it's one of the better Pokemon that got buffed from the recent update. Thank you all for watching. If you like this video, feel free to give it a like and share. Subscribe for future content. Hit that notification bell to get alerted right when I post a new video. And I'll catch you all next time. Bye.